So this is the RD7100 series. So this is the one that uh, is most widely used here, at least in Kansas, for service tax. And, and so this is the simplified form uh, of uh, what radio detection sells. They have the 8100 series as well, but that just has more frequencies. Uh, this one is five frequencies, but you can also dumb it down and make it a, a one frequency locator like the other two that we had shown you. Uh, but you have a display on this one. That's what makes it a little bit different, um, it, where it's going to give you an automatic depth reading showing up all the time. And that's down on the bottom right-hand corner. And then you also have a compass that orientates you what direction the line's going. So if you come across a turn or something, you can see it right away because the compass will turn. Uh, and then you also uh, have a bar graph and, and the null mode. So the bar graph, the numbers are your peak response. Wherever you get the highest response, that's when you should be over. And then the arrows would be your, your null response telling you to go left and right. So you can use both simultaneously. If they both say it's in the same spot, you can be pretty well sure you're, you're on the line. And so we start this one out with the transmitter in, in conductive mode right now. It, it will do induction as well. But to do induction, all you have to do is unplug the cables and you would set the box over the top of where you think that line is with the handle going the same direction as that line. And so uh, when you go into induction on these, it automatically goes to the frequency that should be used for induction, which is 33 kilohertz. And when I go back into conductive mode with the cables, it will go right back to the frequency I was using last when I was conductively locating, and which was 8 kilohertz. And so <clears throat> when you hook up, you want to get that ground the opposite direction of where you plan on going. They usually say 90 degree angle. Uh, I just get it off in this direction because I can see the flags are headed over this way, so I assume we're going to be locating in that direction, and so it's away from the receiver and not going to give you interference. You also want to try to get the ground away from steel buildings like this because these steel buildings, they just like to suck a lot of signal into them, and they really confuse your locator if you're trying to locate right up against it. So I'm going to turn my transmitter on and First thing I'm going to do is select my frequency. We have three basic frequencies right now on this transmitter, which is 512 hertz, 8 kilohertz, and then 33. So that would be a low, a medium, and a high. The low frequency is going to be great for not bleeding off, and it's going to go the furthest distance as long as the other end of this cable or this trace wire is grounded. But I assume it's not because a lot of tracer wires aren't. So 8 kilohertz would probably be a better choice. But when you hook direct, you're going to use usually one of those two, 512 or 8. Most people end up using 8 because it locates almost everything for you. So, it's, but, and it's not too high where it's going to bleed off. 33 will bleed off a lot more. And so to choose your frequency, just hit the F key. That's what it stands for is frequency. And I will go ahead and just uh, choose 8 kilohertz. You'll see it come up right there on the center of the screen. After I chose my frequency, I will look at my output setting. My output right now is on two bars, which should give me 20 milliamps. If I'm not hooked up correctly here, or if I don't have a good ground over there, I'm not going to get 20 milliamps. This is just a voltometer. That's all it's doing is measuring the continuity of your signal going down this line and coming back to the ground rod. And so if we're not getting 20, we better start looking and seeing why. Um, and I can increase that by hitting the up or the down arrows here. So if I increase it another bar, you can see now it's going up to around 100 milliamps. And my voltage will automatically go up to try to compensate for bad continuity, or if you're not using a good ground. Brent, can you push that ground in a little further? Yeah. You'll see right now I'm pushing 60 milliamps, but it's peaking out at 30 volts. When he pushes that ground in a little bit further, now it's up to 63 milliamps. That's why I said if you can use a, a, a longer probe or something with more surface area as your ground, you're going to get more milliamps, your battery life's going to last longer, you're going to be able to locate a lot easier. But another reason why we're only getting 63 milliamps when it should be about 100 right now is because the other end of this tracer wire is not grounded. So you'll see when he grounds the other end of that tracer wire, and this is a loop system, so it's going out and coming back. So just ground it back to the Yeah, when he grounds to that side, you can see right, boom, now i got 100 milliamps. So right away I knew by not getting 100 milliamps something's wrong with this wire. Either it's broke out there a ways or it's just not grounded on the other end. So by grounding it, you can see how it made this thing sing a lot better. It's going to locate a lot easier because of that. And my voltage went down. You can go ahead and unhook it. So now it went back down to 63. So if you're not getting the milliamps, it might be because the wire is broke or somebody just chopped it off, you know, they're weed whacking around the riser there and they ended up cutting it and you didn't really notice it. 
but we're good to go here. We got 63 milliamps going out. We're on eight kilohertz. So now the first thing I want to do with my receiver is choose my frequency. I'll turn it on and my frequencies are found in the bottom left hand corner. And so I'm already on eight kilohertz, but if I wasn't, I would just push the frequency button and get it to the right one. You can see we got the 33 kilohertz, we got the power mode, which is your passive mode that we were talking about yesterday. You have the radio mode, uh, which is the other, another passive mode, and then CPS mode for the cathodic protection systems, you know, that are on transmission lines. And then 512, which is your lowest transmitter frequency, and then the next one is your eight kilohertz that we're using. So now that I'm on eight kilohertz, I will go ahead and choose my antenna configuration that I want to use. This insignia right now is telling me that I'm on a one called guidance mode. Guidance mode is very simple because you don't have to do anything other than follow the arrows. You can see as I go left and right, my numbers will go up and down. I'm looking for my highest number on the center of the screen, highest response, and my arrows will tell me it's right there when I get over it. My depth reading shows up automatically. It's saying one foot deep and my milliamps say 56 milliamps. If you remember, we're pushing out 63 milliamps. I'm picking up 56 out of the 63, so I'm pretty well assured I'm on the line I'm hooked up to. That's a pretty good reading. Now, I can check this depth reading easy enough by lifting it up off the ground. You remember that? So if I get one foot right now, if I lift it up exactly a foot off the ground, it should go to two foot. And right here on the bar graph is about a foot high, so I can mark it with my finger, and right there is, yeah, one foot 11 or two foot, I don't know if I'm exactly a foot, but, mm -hmm. but it's a good way to verify that your depth reading's right. And then by watching your left, right guidance arrows and your, and your numbers, you can verify that you're correct left and right. Now, if I push the right button here, I can go into a straight peak response with no arrows, just like we're using on the other one. You're listening for the highest response is all. But guys like arrows, you know, a lot of people like arrows. He likes arrows, right? No. So. <laughs> Right here. So if I push the, free, the uh, antenna button again, I will go back to what they call peak and null response. This one gives you a nice peak response over the top of it, and it gives you the arrows, the null arrows that you like to use when you, when you need help going left and right. And then the last one here is back to guidance mode. So you got three options on here. That guidance mode, which means you don't have to do any of the gain control adjustments or anything. You just follow the arrows, and you can hear it nulls out or you get no noise when you're over it. Peak mode where you get noise over it, but no arrows. And then the last one, peak and null combined. This is the one I like to use because I like to be able to hear that peak response. And I still got the arrows there to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm on it. And then I can go ahead and follow this out. The only difference is I have to adjust the gain level. So as we're losing signal from the transmitter because of distance, I may have to hit the up arrow to increase my gain. But you can easily tell I'm over the line. My compass is straight this way. My depth is good, and you can actually use the depth as a way to locate the line as well. Wherever you get your shallowest depth as you move up and right, you should be up and down from the line. So you can see when I'm off to the side, I'm at two foot three. There's one foot eight, one foot six. Now it goes back up to one foot eight, two foot ten. So right where I had that one foot six reading, I should be directly up and down from that line. And if I go ahead and follow this out, left and right, just increase my gain a little bit because I'm, I'm losing a little bit of signal. But you'll see when I get up to right about there, my compass is starting to turn because the line's turning. And so it's, it's tilting this way, telling me my line is turning to the right. So then I'll go ahead and rotate my receiver to match the compass and follow this turn right through. And there it goes, off that way. So that's one advantage of having a nice big screen like this so it can kind of watch it as you're going along. and. And uh, when you're using the peak mode too, you can, you can definitely hear that signal die off if you end up passing that turn. You, your sound and everything goes away. So you can come back to this spot and try to follow it and see where it's going much easier. So that's everything on the 7100 7, series. Any questions? That's a great All right. Everybody needs one. Everybody needs one, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. I got one.